everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to the Magister, a procedural role-playing game as usual. So, welcome to Silverhurst. Magisters are judge, jury, and executioner rolled into one, assigned to locations far from the capital. They enforce the will of the Empire and the rule of law in the far-flung far -flung provinces. You are a Magister, sent to investigate the death of another northern province of Silverhurst. You will have to use your skills wisely in this adventure if you want to survive long enough to solve the murder. Every playthrough of this game is uniquely generated, with its own plot twists and events. Feel free to replay the adventure as many times as you like. So we can be Augustus, Cassius, or Th Thaddeus. Strong insomniac, intelligent, psychotic, or cunning alcoholic. So, cannot sleep well, always tired. Quick-tempered and violent, better in combat, worse in di tactical diplomacy. Good at thinking, can buy intellect cards, start with tactics. Good at fighting, can buy physique cards, start with extra HP. Good at tricks, can buy... Kyle card, start with tactical diplomacy. Has a drinking problem, needs alcohol. Man, what do you guys want? Alright, cunning alcoholic it is. Okay, sound effects are a little loud, I'll have to turn it down. So, perks, sleight of hand, intellect, physique. Oh. So, raw strength and physical ability. Dominate your opponents with superior martial ability. Can buy nine additional skills or intellect. Well, what do we want? Physique? Oh, I don't get a choice. Okay. A gentle breeze blows in from the southwest. After a three-hour ship journey, you re reach the province of Silverhurst. Your boat is tied to the village docks, and you see a town official waving at you from the pier. Inside your pockets are your magister's orders, signed by the magister general himself. You've been sent here to investigate a murder. The death of a magister. The Magister's Citadel tends to take these things seriously. Alright. First and foremost, si oh, pff. yeah, go figure. There's a bit of a disparity here. I was wondering about that. Why are the sound effects so loud? The birds are really loud, though. I almost wonder if they're not tied to a sound, sound slider. Well, sounds balancing is difficult, no matter what game it is, especially for a game in beta. So, if it seems like there's any weird choices uh, or bugs. Chances are they just haven't been not ironed out yet. Anyway. It's an old man. He looks like a town official of some sort. Good morning, Magister. Welcome to Silverhurst. My name is Marcus. I'm the local councilman. I've made the necessary arrangements for your arrival and investigation. Tell me about the murder. Of course. Would you like to know? Is there a tavern here? Looks taken aback. Takes a sniff at you, standing uncomfortably close to him. Out of alcoholic vapor emanates from your body. Local tavern and inn is the courtesan and uh, courtesan and a hermit inn. It's also where the murder happened. Interesting. Tell me more. He knows his eyes. The maid at the courtesan and hermit inn found his body in the private room two days ago. The room's sealed, but you can get the key from the innkeeper Harry. Nobody knows anything else other than that. Thanks for your assistance. He nods. Very good, Magister. If you need me again, you can find me in the village square, just north of here. I wish you the best of luck in your investigation. Councilman Re Relationship Plus. You've improved your relationship with the councilman by one star. As you perform tasks for various villagers, your relationship with them will gradually improve. Many characters will only be cooperative once it reaches three stars. The board represents a mental map of your investigations. Mouse over an item to see more details. You can view this board again at any time by clicking view board in your journal. I am really liking this. This is kind of cool. Sunsetting looks like a mobile or browser game. That's because ner that's where Nerduk got his start. Nerduk? Nerduk? I, you know what? I've never asked him. He's actually in chat, not infrequently. I, I should have probably played this when he was around, but I, sometimes the timing is just not there. I'll probably, I mean, I absolutely will play more of this as we go along. Um, but it's a murder mystery, maybe with some roguelike elements. I have no, I know it's procedurally generated. I do not know what happens if you die. All right. Good morning, Magister. So it looks like a lot of these characters are no one. If they have an ex uh, question marks below them, there's someone I can talk to. Man has a really impressive beard. He stares at you quietly as you approach. Good morning. Name's Liam. Can I help you? He asks in a gruff voice. What do you do here? I run errands for the guards. He explains. Odd jobs and such. Nothing important. Huh. What now? What do you know about the murder? Didn't do it. Was here the whole night. Same as every night, he replies. 
I have trouble sleeping. I watch the sea. Got it. Okay. So he didn't do it, but he was... Oh, he was here. Here, here. The whole night. I was like, here's in the bar? But no. Uh, like to leave now? Leave and never ask me again. There's a small crowd gathered here, led by a large man glaring at you with a vicious expression. Another Imperial dog limping into our village. I thought the first one was bad enough. He growls drunkenly, a slight slur in his voice. Steady now, Arthur. You've definitely had one too many drinks, the guard says firmly. Just go home. That's a magister. Them to calm them down. So, this reminds me of... What's the clay one? The, the clay deck builder roguelike that I am totally forgetting the name of. There's too many game titles, and I'm... Uh, Griftlands, there we go. I'm getting a very heavy Griftlands vibe from this. Okay. Left-click a card to play it, or right-click to discard a card. End turn if you're done. Okay, so I've got draws, rage levels. Okay. Tactical Diplomacy. Play cards to gain empathy. Reduce the rage level to zero within 12, uh, within 12 turns to win. Hint, use Break Will to reduce the Rage level, and be careful not to buy too many cards. Okay. Warning Shot. Gain Empathy. 1 to 4, gain 3 Empathy. 5 to 6, reduce the Rage level by 3. I probably should have paid attention. Oh, so Empathy lets me buy cards up here. Oh, that's cool. So... This has a gambling chance of getting me more Empathy. Discard cards, draw, and gain an extra turn. Okay, that's cool. Small talk. Gain an empathy. In tactical diplomacy, empathy allows you to purchase more cards for this attempt or lower the rage level using the break will card. Okay, let's do another small talk. And then warning shot. Banished cards are removed from your deck only for the rest of battle. They'll reappear at the start of future battles. Got it. Okay, so I've got three empathy. We can do consider this. Oh. I see. But they go in. in. Okay. Spend five empathy to reduce the rage level by one if you don't have enough. If you don't have enough, draw a card instead. Every time... This reduces the rage level. Increase the cost by one. Okay, so small talk. Small talk again. White Lies. Upgrade this card every time it's played. It gets more powerful every time. White Lie reduces the rage level by one. Okay, so we absolutely want to get that. Gain three empathy, then delete this and a random card in your hand. Might as well draw Annoyed. Spend one empathy... Okay, to delete this card, draw a card. Well, it didn't work. Okay. So I've still got some turns left. This is neat. So heavy, uh, let's see. Long talk. One empathy, upgrade small talk, card in your hand if possible. Roll, die, no effect, gain three empathy. Cool. So compromise, gain three empathy that... Oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. Let's start with white lies. Reduces the rage level by one. I thought. Okay. So consider this. Choose a card to discard. Okay, let's discard that. Gain some empathy. Roll a die. Compromise deletes itself. Okay, we could buy time. Well, let's get a long talk. And then we will end turn. I don't like this. It's not luck. Draw a card in your next dice roll this turn. Okay, annoyed card has been added to your deck. Spend one empathy to clear from your deck. Oh, got it. Draw a card. Your next dice roll will always be a six. Okay, let's do a consider this. Discard annoyed. Long talk gets me a small talk too. Listen gets me some more. I'll buy Compromise, let's chat, and then I think I will wait. Okay, Furious, delete this card, then spend 5 Empathy to gain an extra turn, otherwise lose a turn.
Okay. I've got four empathy, so I don't want to do that. Do furious. Okay, so if I do small talk, I can break will. And then we end. We don't want to do that. Spend three empathy, delete this card, draw two cards. We have just enough. So that lets me draw a little bit more. We can do another empathy. Cool. Okay, so let's do a small talk. Let's chat. Okay, let's do compromise. Perfect. We deleted that card. Draw two cards. Discard a card. Go for the white lie. No. Gain two empathy. Draw a card. Upgrade this to white lie. Listen for some more things. Gambit. Delete, delete the card. Roll a die. I'll go for Gambit, but I think we're fine. Long talk gets me a small talk too. Listen, doesn't give me too much else. We got four turns left. We're... Oh, reduce the rage level by one. Permanently delete the card. There we go. This is cool. Your tone of voice shakes them into sobriety. Their leader hesitates, then spits on the floor and backs away. Well, back off, but you better watch your step in town. Wouldn't want anything unfortunate to happen to you, eh? The villagers start to stand down, much to the relief of the watching guards. One of them nods their head at you in gratitude. That could have turned out ugly. Okay, so none of these guys have anything to say. Angry villager has nothing to say to me either. Death to the Imperials. Wow, these people really don't like me. Passing time. Each time you leave a location and return to the world map, time is advanced. Use your night time use your time wisely. Once it's late night, most locations are empty and you need to return to the inn. Okay. We're gonna go to the inn. Hi. This is a uh, Griffin. I gotta say the art improves with every game. But I have no idea. Okay. Examine the sign. The sign for the end. There are two people depicted on the sign, cartoonishly painted. Scantily clad courtesan with a fan covering her mouth, kissing a bearded man with his face hidden in shadows. Below the picture are the words, the courtesan and hermit inn. Alright, I want to go check, check out the Griffey. I would love to know if he did this himself, or if these are. Uh, if he has, like, a separate art artist. Or if these are bought assets, because I really like the. Uh... I'm actually getting a screenshot. If I can. I really like the maps. I've been working on D&D &D mapping lately as a, uh, as both a hobby and also because I've got a D&D &D campaign that I'm slowly working on. And mapping, like making D&D &D maps is an art. It's not easy and making them look good is hard. And so I'm actually really appreciating uh, the fact that these this is effectively very much just D and D art. Okay, well let's go talk to the innkeeper. The innkeeper of the courtesan and hermit inn. He nods his head at you and waits for your response. Like a drink, please. The innkeeper stares for a moment, grabs an empty mug, sets it down gently. Have you one gold crown for a mug of light creamy ale? He offers. Here. You slide the coin to the innkeeper, and he pours a frothy drink into the mug. As you chuck it down, the cold beer tastes. Pretty decent. In that moment, you can almost forget all the worries of the world, leaving behind the bitter darkness of your past. Some questions? You hear about the Magister? He grunts, wiping grime off a mug. We sealed off his room after his body was found the next morning. My name's Harry, owner of this fine, fine establishment. Observe him carefully. Take a breath and focus your senses on the innkeeper. Middle-aged male, humorous, piercing eyes, untidy hair, too busy with the inn to groom himself properly. Cheap, dirty clothes, stained with wine. Cheap copper earring. Strong build. Years of working the end have given, them given him the constitution of an ox. Seems friendly and honest. Likely relieved to be dealing with a figure of authority rather than the usual village drunks. The innkeeper is a busy, ma busy man, but not a wealthy one. He's friendly, strong, and well-built. How can I help you today, Magister, he says. What do you know about the murder? It was a busy night at the inn. 
So I manned the bar downstairs all night. We're short-staffed here. There's a crowd, and you know how it is. I only heard about the murder the next morning when the barmaid found the body. Gruesome business, that was. Look, there's some bit... There were plenty of witnesses who saw me here, and everyone upstairs, Magister. Thank you for your cooperation. We found the body. I have a maid who helps out in the inn. Her name's Millie. Poor thing was terrified with what she saw. Had to send her home. She's still not back to work yet. He sniffs. Dreadful business, this. I believe she lives down by the village docks if you'd like to go talk to her. Millie lives near the docks. Another question. Okay, anyone say saw anything? It's strange, I was here the whole night. Didn't notice anything unusual. He frowns. But then again, there's always someone coming or going here. I'm busy enough behind the bar as it is. How about coming back this evening? There's a regular named Stefan. Lurks around the place every night. If anyone saw him, anything strange should be him. Stefan, got it. Alright. Need the key to the crime scene. He looks embarrassed. Ah, uh, uh, There's a thing, Magister. I had the key a while ago. Now I can't find it. I've been searching all over, but there's no sign of it. Can't believe myself. Voice trails off sheepishly. Maybe you can go upstairs and see if there's any other way in. <laughs> Sorry. And make him remember where he lost the key. We're sleight of hands. He cheerfully chat with the innkeeper, slightly touching various po points of his clothes whenever he's distracted. Sure enough, find a spot where there's a hard metal object. I think the key's in your apron. The innkeeper's face suddenly lights up. Oh, of course! He fishes in his apron, produces a grimy key. Here it is! Must have dropped it inside when I was cleaning up. Ha! <laughs> Here you go, Magister. Key's all yours. Magister stayed in the private- Oh, the Magister stayed in the private room upstairs, end of the hallway. Largest room we have. Can't miss it. Thank you. Alright, any interesting rumors today? Well, it's true that there are all sorts of interesting things happening every day. However, the barmaid's missing. So I'm swamped with work here. You can persuade her to get back to work, Magister. That'd be a big help. Hmm. You should... Oh, hmm. You should probably try asking him again when you improve your relationship with, uh, up to three stars. Okay. What's today's special? You're hungry. Today's... Special is soft lamb chunks, boiled with onion rings, and served on a flat square noodles. For you, Magister, it's just one crown. Sure. You pay a crown to the innkeeper and serves you the meal. It's delicious. You feel full after eating it. Bonus max HP. I like that. That's all for now. Okay, anybody to talk to here? Probably not. Something about a game with single digit increments to stats like EXP is appealing to me. It's because it feels uncomplicated. It's simple. It it doesn't make you feel like you killed the thing, you get 10,000 experience points. Like, after a certain point, you just lose all connection to it. Doors locked. You open the door with the private room key. It swings open. Investigate, investigate, investigate. The bed has not been made. There are some blood stains on the sheets. You search under the bed, but there's nothing to be found except for a small leather strap. Examine the strap. Clues are important discoveries during your investigation. Remember to inspect them by clicking the View Clues button in the upper right. Examine the strap carefully. It looks vaguely familiar. You can't remember where you've seen it before. The floor is a mess. It looks like there was a struggle of some kind. The contents of the overturned table are scattered all over the floor. You notice a half-eaten sandwich that has fallen on the floor. You pick it up carefully, wrap it with some cloth, and place it inside your jacket pocket. It's a small sandwich. Or a big jacket. Wait a minute. You spot something on the floor. Brown leaves. You sniff it. There's a distinct aroma. Perhaps you need to investigate this more closely. Huh. A clue. Did this belong to the Magister or the murderer? As you turn away, something shiny catches your eye. Under an overturned chair, there's a gleam. You take a closer look and find a necklace. It's golden. There's a single red gem in the middle. The chain is broken. Interesting. You wonder who dropped this. You've leveled up. Every time you gain enough experience to level up, you gain an extra perk that grants your Magister an advantage for the rest of the playthrough. Click to select a new perk. Hovering over every perk will show a description. So I could also just increase my HP. Alright. Pro protective discard. Choosing the guard option when discarding a card now gives 10 block instead of 5. Every time this is selected, upgrade a card from your deck. 
choosing the unleash option when discarding a card now, uh, discarding a card now aims an energy blast at an enemy. Huh. Okay. What do you guys think? Improvement is interesting. I like the idea of it. Aimed discard sounds kind of fun. Why don't more games have low EXP scale? It just looks better. It feels better, at least for now. Middle would be interesting. Block? No, that's a good point. Not fighting a whole lot. Plus 10 block. The problem is it's hard to tell which is useful. Because I haven't fought anything. Let's go protective discard. That actually does sound quite useful. Can I interact with the man? Certain events give you a skill point that can be spent to upgrade your Magister's skills. You may spend skill points when traveling to the world map or before sleeping. You found the body of the dead Magister. The sight of it stirs deeply buried emotions within you, an odd mix of anger and helplessness, and burning a burning urge to correct an injustice in the world. You gain a bonus skill point. You may use this to unlock a new skill or a specialization. First things first, you should check the bodies for clues. There's a gun lying on the floor near the body. Examine the wound. There's a single gunshot wound in the middle of the chest. The size of the entry wound is consistent with a pistol fired at close range. Examine the body. Check their pockets. You find some coins and a small iron key. You take the money, pocket the key. You wonder what locket opens. Take the gun. Pick up the pistol. Only a single shot has been fired. The second shot still loaded in the gun. The shot was so powerful that it penetrated the magister's body and broke the window. The entire window is shattered. Not just the glass, but parts of the frame as well. This is giving me an extremely strong Disco Elysium vibe. In, like, a really satisfying manner. They're done with the body, Magister. Oh, there's a dog. Okay. I'm done with the body, you say. Let's get it buried as soon as we can. The innkeeper nodded solemnly. I'll take care of it, Magister. He reappears after a short while. It's been arranged. We'll move him to the village graveyard. Here, I'll mark it on your map. It's right outside of town. There's an old man who takes care of things there. You can talk to him for more details. Alright, so if you journal, we got that. Cards. Oh, hey, here's my cards. So, these are the cards that get upgraded. My tactical dialogue stuff is separate. Okay, so we got barmaid. We've got some food. This is super cool. It really it does feel like if you took... Okay, skill points available. So we could... So this would let me gain the tactics card or plan ahead card. Or physique. What else do we got? Deception. Gain decoy. And unlocks deception and blatant lie cards for tactical diplomacy. Okay. Thievery. Haggling. Luck. Resolve one at random. Two empathy, draw cards, gain an extra turn. If you gained an extra turn, banish this card. Lucky ain't bad. So what do you guys think? Physique? Intellect. Physique wouldn't be terrible for the extra bonus HP, but we haven't gone into combat. Lucky sounds kind of fun. I'm gonna go luck. Luck sounds really interesting. Okay. So let's go to the docks. Let's go find the barmaid. We could use some help, Magister. The men is dressed like the guards, but with extra trimmings that indicate a higher position of command. Hello there. Hey there, Magister, he says. My name is Luther. 
I'm the captain of the guards of Silverhurst. We're here to help you and the councilman keep the peace. Observe him carefully. Take a breath. Focus your senses. Okay. Expensive, high-quality armor. Silk cake. Uh, cake. Cape. Strong build. Experienced fighter. Expert with a sword. Confident. Fearless. Not easily intimidated. Or of authority. Captain is strong and wealthy. He has a cape and is obviously capable of taking care of himself in battle. So, what can I do for you today? Any crimes you need help with? Well, we can always use the help of a magister. Here are the cases we have at the moment. Horned criminal. Murdered villager. Strange death. Strange death! There's been a mysterious death in the village. Can you take a look for us, Magister? Let's see, where are you the night of the murder? I'm always busy keeping the peace of Silverhurst. These things always slip my mind. He hesitates and his voice trails off. You sense he's hiding something. Okay, come back later. The lady carries herself with a confident air. The expensive clothes indicate that she's no ordinary woman. Greetings. Magister, she replies in a voice melodic, in her voice a melodic drawl. My name's Amelia. I am a courtesan. The best one in Silverhurst, in fact. She smiles, then takes a long drag from her smoking stick, blowing smoke to one side. Interesting. Ex what is it exactly that you do? She bursts out laughing at your question. Her laugh is strangely attractive, deep and gravelly, but sweet. It's not quite what you think, Magister. I'm an intellectual courtesan. Instead of satisfying your physical needs, I'm highly skilled in satisfying the deeper needs of your mind. She smiles again. It's a beautiful smile. People pay me money to help them forget. Not sure I need to forget anything. She gives you an amused look and then stares deep in your eyes. If that were true, you wouldn't be searching for oblivion at the bottom of a bottle, Magister. Your drinking problem's only a symptom. Spend some time with me and I can help you resolve the real cause. Once again, the disarming smile. If you can afford me, that is. I'm not sure I need to pay money just to forget something. <laughs> she gives another giggle. Well, worth and value are rather subjective. I'm certain you'll change your mind eventually, Magister. Why not give it a try? I might even give a special discount, just as someone as important to... Uh, just to have someone as important as the local Magister to spend time with. I see, an intellectual courtesan. Alright, I got it. Observe her carefully. Take a breath, focus. Okay, highly intelligent eyes, piercing gaze, expensive makeup and jewelry, expensive, tasteful clothes, latest fashion in the capital. Doesn't seem strong enough to fight a Magister. Smokes from a fashionable smoking stick. S slight smirk, faint amusement. She's wealthy and smokes from a smoking stick commonly used by aristocracy in the capital. Uh, let's see, let's try. Available moment, what would you like to talk? What about the payment? She smiles. Don't worry about that, Magister. We can discuss payment afterwards. Cleansing your mind is more important to me. I'll stock then. <laughs> As both of you continue speaking, you feel your mind relaxing. You find yourself sharing events with of your in your past with her. The rest of the time passes in a calming blur. You open your eyes hours later and feel much more refreshed and mentally reinvigorated. Well, that was a refreshing session, she says. If you felt it was useful, I'd like to request a small payment of five coins. Okay. That's expensive, but there we go. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Oh. So, here we go. As the courtesan's scent of perfume slowly lingers and fades, you can still he hear her sweet laughter ringing in your ears. You're pre you are pleasantly surprised to realize that the time spent with her has improved your mind. Upgrade a card. Choose a card to upgrade. I was really hoping I could upgrade luck. Okay. Slash. Defends to defends. Okay, quick slash. Deep breath. Block. Extra damage to your next attack. Banish the card. Ooh. Deep breath ain't terrible. So that gets me 2 to 8 damage. This gets me 7 to 8. Yeah, slash. Okay, so let's not talk to her unless I'm actually hurt. It looks like the bard made at the courtes courtesan and hermit inn. This must be the girl the innkeeper told you about. Good afternoon. She jumps at the sound of your voice. Oh, God, another magister. A year two. Oh, no, it was terrible. The barmaid bursts into tears. Looks like this is Millie. The in uh, Looks like this is Millie, like the innkeeper said. We're going to need tactical diplomacy to get anything out of her. Time to calm her down.
Okay. So let's take a look. Small talk, small talk, long talk. Another small talk. Okay. Lucky. Gain two empathy, draw two cards, gain an extra turn. If you gain an extra turn, banish the card. Worth it. Warning shot. Ooh. Have that skip heavy handed. Okay, let's do that. Annoyed. Burn that. Consider this. Let's get let's me get rid of some. Discard that. Pop that lets me draw another. Lucky gets me another empathy. I could get a second break will, but I don't need it. Draw a card, your next dice roll this turn will always be a six. I'm gonna get that. If we can actually do that with warning shot, we will be in a good spot. Nope. No choice. We'll go for the gain an extra turn. There's white lies. Get that. Okay. Pop Lucky. Okay. Buy time again. Break Will. Okay, and I don't have anything else. Consider this. Dump long talk. Pop lucky. Let's see what we get. <sighs> Reconsider. There's break will. I'll just pop it, see what I get. Small talk, small talk. And white lie. Okay. Spend three empathy to delete this card and draw two cards. Let's get rid of that. There's another white lie. Burn annoyed. Okay. Draw two cards. It's not luck. Gain an empathy. I'm not going to be able to... Alright, there's the white lies, at the very least. Oh. I didn't realize I can reuse that as much as I want. All right, let's do consider this. Discard one of that. Reconsider. White lie three. Lucky. Burn and annoyed. Another white lie. Empathy like crazy. There we go. We've got pretty good draw right now. I could use more though. Break will. Long talk, small talk. Consider this. Burn that. Oop, burn that. There we go. Successful. I like this. You finally managed to calm her down. I. It bugs me a little bit the warning shot is an option when talking to a character like this, but hey, here we go. And her reputation is three. You finally managed to calm her down. Sorry, my lord. I was just so shaken. You nod patiently. Don't worry about it. Just take a deep breath. When you're ready, tell me what happened. I was working in the inn that night, handling the usual busy crowd. There was a terrible thunderstorm that night with heavy rain from the from evening till dawn. Maybe that's why nobody heard anything. Only went upstairs the next morning and found the magister's door slightly ajar. She hesitated, then continues on, voice trembling. I opened the door and screamed. He was just lying dead on the floor. I ran downstairs to find the innkeeper. He sealed the room. The door was locked. He sent a messenger to the signal tower. Everyone knows a dead magister is bad news. Sure, sure enough, you arrived here the next morning. Okay. 
Do you remember who sent the message on the night of the murder? She thinks for a while. Of course I remember. The messenger was, me messenger was Liam. He runs, often runs errands for the guards. You need to speak to him. I'm sure you can find him by the docks where he always hangs out. I see. You tell me what you saw again. Okay, so it's the same stuff. So I think everybody else is going to be about the same. All right, let's go talk to Liam. Greetings. What now? He asks. He grunts in a gruff voice. He sent the message to the signal tower where the dead mas magister was found. I sent it late, though. He explains. When I arrived, the boys were fixing it. I had to wait an hour. Well, that's interesting. The signal tower is being repaired the morning after the murder. Sabotage? Which is coincidence. You should go there and ask. Right, thanks. Okay, nobody else here is to talk to. Yep, got it. Oh, love to speak with you again. I assume she just wants another... Where are you on the night of the murder? I was busy with one of my regulars that night. I really don't remember much else. She hesitates and her voice trails off. She says she's hiding something. Okay, yeah, yeah. I want to go fight something. Strange death. Well, this might be it. You travel along the main road, heading for your destination. Suddenly you hear a loud cry. Up ahead, a strange hermit is under attack by a cave frog. Combat bar. In the upper right shows the turn order. A character activates when a pip reaches the leftmost edge. The icon above each character shows what they intend to do next. Okay, it's my turn. Wait, what? I... Okay. I guess I can't go for that. Alright, so we've got defend. Got it. You leveled up. I get a perk. Pickpocket. Once per day, interacting with a villager will pickpocket them, giving you a crown and a trinket. Every time this is selected, game five crowns or physique skill tree. Add a smash card to your deck. So what do you, what do we want? The crown and the trinket might be interesting. Physique for the extra HP might also be really good. I'm not sure if I'll get caught. I'm going to go pickpocket. It's probably a terrible idea. So, loot. Something was dropped here. You pick it up and find something. It looks like some bloodstained bullets. Perhaps the trader will be willing to buy this. So, is that it? Looks like it was. Okay. I don't see anything else. Time to leave. As you travel along the road, you encounter some villagers. You may speak to them if you wish or continue on along. Dear. Fight, dear. Nope. Loot. Okay, so we got a small knife. Can be sold to the trader later. We also get an axe. Let's see, weapon. Blacksmith can make use of this. Hunter. Well, the Magister, want to hunt some deer with me? I'll pay you one crown as your share of the pelts. Let's do it. Alright. Magister draws his weapon, prepares to fight. Okay. Prepare to fight... I'm going to get killed by the deer. Guaranteed. Drunk. You're drunk from the drink you had. If played or discarded, discard every other card in your hand. Then draw that many... Drunk. Consuming alcohol clogs up your deck with drunk cards for the rest of the day. Alcoholic magisters will have needed drink cards in their deck until they have at least one drink. Music's pretty good. Okay. Let's run down. Oh, I can gain... Move. Let's guard. Lock. I don't want to take damage. I don't know if these deer are going to come straight for me. Actually, it looks like they're going to just wail on this poor lady. Plus side, 
lucky. I gain, I gain some money. Melee attack does roll damage. If it's human, gain a crown. Well, I can't hit her. Draw. Destroy that deer. Alright. Gain a crown. Good afternoon. I think we're good. This is... I like this. This is a neat little pseudo CRPG. Reach the location of the strange death is marked on your map. Guard approaches you and explains the situation. Villager, villager was found here a short while ago. Took a look around at the body and any clues. Then talk to me again when you figure out what happened here. Examine clue. Find a journal on the ground. You flip through it. From the entries, it appears to belong to the shoemaker. To a shoemaker. Journal details the author's increasingly depressed depressing misfortunes over the years. Final entry reads, it's all so tiring, I wish it all would end somehow. Dead body. It's a dead body. You examine the body closely. There's some white froth around the mouth. The right hand is clenched around the throat, and the face is locked in a tortured expression. Suicide? Guard looks at you expectantly. Well, Magister, did you figure out what caused the death? Ate a poisonous fruit by accident. Guard looks a little doubtful. Oh, wait, what? I failed to fo solve the death, but what else? What other clues were there? The person is not unconscious. Wait, investigate. Oh, there's something interesting here. It's a small glass vial. Liquid inside. That wasn't there previously. God damn it. Well. I don't remember that being there. Set up the signal tower. Okay. Well, one way or another, I think this is actually a really good stopping point, at least for now. I've been going for about 40 minutes. Oh. Wait. It was there. It wasn't there. Didn't see it. Okay, I'm getting mixed messages here. Maybe I had to investigate the body for it to show up. Maybe that was the case. I don't know. Uh, I will be more careful when this game actually comes out. Uh, now that now that I know I can't just jump to conclusions. I was just like, well, it's only giving me three options there. And, I mean, clearly he died from something poisonous. But, yeah. Anyway. I like this game. It's very much like everything I like about a lot of CRPGs. But the, the smaller, more focused procedural generation means that it's going to be both faster and not nearly as bloated, which is huge for me. I have no idea when this game is coming out. Uh, to be honest, it's currently in closed beta, but I'm I'm having a good time with this and I can't wait to play more. Can we try eating the sandwich? I doubt it. Oh. By interacting with these, we can actually figure out if there's a bonus. Like, we can investigate clues. Yeah, so go go talk to the sage for a number of them. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, it seems really cool, and I can't wait to to play more of this. I love how simple it is, but how well all of the mechanics play together. The investigations, the actual combat, the interacting with people. It borrows a lot of influences, intentionally or unintentionally, from a lot of games that I really like. And mixes that with a lot of... I mean, the visuals work really well. This reminds me of, honestly... I'm going to say the really old CRPGs in terms of format, where you have kind of your main play window and then the the bar on the side with the event log and all the interactions and stuff. I I like it. I like it and I can't wait to play more. Uh, isn't this a random generator murder investigation game? It is, but it's, it's handled well enough that if I didn't know it was procedurally generated, I would have just assumed this was, you know, hand designed from the get-go, which is good. That's really good. I'm sure subsequent playthroughs will start to feel a bit samey after a while. But you know what? That's okay. I Not every game needs to be replayed a billion different times. And of all of the Nerdic games I've played, and I've played a fair bit of them, I, this is by far my favorite. Uh, but for now at least, if you guys like this episode in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Because, yeah, I got a lot of indie games to, to get through. 
And I can't wait to play this game when it does come out. Whenever that's going to be. And honestly, I could play some more beta if people really wanted me to. But I think I'd prefer to save my enthusiasm for when it's actually out. So, with that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.